and get you comfortable with that. What if you had y squared plus y is equal to 1 plus x over 1 minus x. So here is an equation, and what we want to find is dy dx, the first derivative, but y is not solved for by itself. It's a, this is not explicitly defined. This is an implicit function. In other words, we know how y and x are related, but we don't have y on one side of the equal sign by itself. So the way we do that is we take the derivative of both sides. Now on the right hand side, it's going to be exactly what you've been doing up until now. In this case, it's the quotient rule. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom of the bottom squared. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over bottom squared. Okay, so when you see x's, I guess is what I'm trying to get at, in these implicit functions, you just take the derivative of those x's just like you always have. No difference. But when you have the y's, there's a little bit more that you have to do here. The derivative of this first term is 2y, all right, just like if it were x, but you have to multiply by dy dx because you don't know how y varies with respect to x. That takes care of this term. The second term, the derivative of this is just simply 1. But again, you have to multiply by dy dx because you don't know how y varies with respect to x. So if you don't understand anything else, the way you handle implicit differentiation is you take the derivative of the y's just like you always have, except you tag a dy dx onto there, always. And then the x's, you take derivatives exactly the way you've always been doing for everything up until this point. And that is really the short, dirty little secret on how you handle it. So let's factor this guy out. We'll have a dy dx. And on the inside, we'll have a 2y plus 1. The reason we're factoring it out is because we want to solve for dy dx. That's what we're trying to find. And on the right-hand side, we'll have 1 minus x. The derivative of this guy is just going to be 1 minus 1 plus x. The derivative of this guy is negative 1. And on the bottom, we're just going to have 1 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and simplify this just a little bit more. We'll have dy dx, 2y plus 1. And then over here, it'll be simply 1 minus x. Here, we're going to distribute in negative times negative is positive, so we're going to have 1 plus x just sitting on the top. And then we'll have 1 minus x squared. So we just have to simply have some algebra. So just to continue simplifying, what we'll have is dy dx, 2y plus 1. On the top, negative x goes out with x, so what we'll have is 2 over 1 minus x squared. So to finish this guy up, we'll just solve for dy dx. And we're dividing here, so what we're going to have is 2 over 2y plus 1, 1 minus x squared. And that's the answer. Uh, 2 over 1 minus x squared times 2y plus 1, which is exactly the answer. Now notice that this is the derivative of y with respect to x. In order to, to actually calculate a value, a numerical value for the slope of our original curve, which is a derivative, we'll have to supply a x and a y point, x comma y, a point on this relation, on this function. We can't really graph it so easily because we don't have y defined in terms of x, but certainly there are values of x and y that go together that would make this equation valid, right? So there are ordered pairs, x comma y, that fit this function. We just have to supply one of them to calculate the slope of the original curve at that function. So it's very common when you get your implicit differentiation, your implicit, implicit derivatives, to have y's and x's running around uh, your answer. And the reason that's the case is because our original function was not explicitly defined. So our derivative is not going to look quite so nice either. That's basically the bottom line on that. Let's say you're going to find the secant of y.